Hi, today we're going to be talking about installing New Vector for getting some security inside of your Kubernetes clusters. In fact, I'm going to be narrowing down a little bit to talking about putting New Vector into one of the hyperscalers Kubernetes de deployments, um, IKS, EKS, AKE. I chose GKE today for our demo because I just did. Um, the other thing I'm going to be doing is using Helm. So as you can imagine, we probably have some assumptions that'll make this bit of training a little bit worthwhile. First of all, that you have a Kubernetes cluster and that you have access to that cluster by way of a uh, cube CTL, cube control. I'm going to be calling it cube cuddle. You're going to have to just, just get over that while we're going on. And as you probably imagined, we're going to need Helm installed. Um, if you don't have Helm installed, you can either watch along and do it later, or you could pause this video now, go get Helm set up. It's actually pretty easy. That's not what this video is about. But what it is about is actually showing you how quick and easy it is to get new vector installed inside of your environment. So let's just get underway. I'm not going to pause this or edit it down because I want to make a point about how quick it actually is. So I'm going to head to the documentation for new vector. Uh, that's at open dash docs dot new vector dot com N E U vector. Um, and again, I'm going to be installing using Helm. So I'm going to click right on this big candy like button to go to the Helm charts uh, out at GitHub. Um, let's go digging in to the chart. I'm going to go right into charts, look at core. And what I want to do, this is uh, a preference for me. Maybe you want to pass a few values along. You can see on this page what those values are. I highly recommend reading them to make sure you customize it for your environment. But the other thing to do is to use a values.yaml file. I'm going to actually go grab this file right now and I'm going to get all of the uh, text that's evolved in it. You could put this into Vim. I'm actually just gonna put it into my favorite little GUI text editor so that we can walk along with this process as it happens. So let's go back here, hit some copy, hit a little bit of paste. And I'm not gonna show you everything this because that would be a little bit boring, but let's just take this from the top on down. So right now um, we're gonna be looking, we're gonna be pulling the uh, new vector images from Docker. Remember new vector is purely container Kubernetes native. So it's, it's not a SAS. You don't have to worry about your data being stove piped out or anything like that. And you certainly don't have to install any appliances or any weird code injections or anything like that. So the answer to the question, how do I install it? is how do you normally install applications? So right up here as the time of this recording, um, 504 is the latest edition. Of course, you know, code ages poorly. It could be a newer version. Uh, that's something you wanna know about in your Helm chart. So if you were installing New Vector and a new version came along, you could always come back here, increment this number right here and move along. I'm gonna leave it at 504. Uh, the rest of these things I'm going to actually leave alone for my installation. So there are some elements. There's the controller that goes in. There are those images there. You'll see that by default, this Helm chart has three replicas for the installation. That's good. Um, we want them active, active, active. That's for high availability. I'm also going to go down here and take a look at... I know I'm moving a little bit fast through this. So I wanna point out something about managed services. Um, if you're going to be doing anything like federation for new vector across multiple clusters you'll want to turn those on your deployment i'm doing a single cluster installation today i'm going to leave that alone you could of course update that later on with your helm chart and move on through it that's just fine i'm not using an ingress um, i'm just going to want to change something to make sure that on my public cloud i'm using a load balancer for the gui so leaving the rest of these alone i'm going to move all the way down to the manager and I'm going to change that service type to be a load balancer, right? Because that's, I wanna get a public IP address on my public cloud and leave that be. The next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do, or you're gonna to wanna to do, is scroll generally down to the bottom here, way at the end. This is probably one of the most important parts of this chart, it's the thing where we have the most errors like, why didn't it install? Why didn't it work? Let's make sure that you're using the right runtime for your cloud. Uh, in my case, I'm installing to GKE. Uh, AKS is like this too. Um, most of the cloud providers are actually now uh, doing container D as a runtime. So all you have to do in this container D right here on row 348 is change the false to true. Uh, that's gonna probably be enough. I'm going to now save this and let's just call this 
nv-values.yaml. All set up and ready to go. So if I go back to my terminal, uh, I just got done installing a brand new GKE cluster uh, just using the Google Cloud command line utilities. Um, let's just, I'll do a git nodes command so we know that we're looking at the right cluster here. And then I'm actually going to use those values that I just showed you in the file. So Helm, yes, I look at my keyboard when I'm typing. You make me nervous, you know. So I'm gonna do a Helm install. I am gonna name the installation. I'm gonna name this new vector installation something clever, like, you know, new vector. I'm gonna tell it where to go get these. And that is new vector slash core. Uh, that relates back to right here, right? We're looking at those core charts. And then I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that I'm putting it in a namespace. Again, guess what we're gonna do here? I'm gonna call the namespace new vector. And then I'm gonna pass a command because I haven't created that namespace yet. In Helm, you can do the create namespace right away inside of here. And that's just dash dash create dash namespace. Isn't nice when the words make sense? I get that uh, space out of there, those should be touching. And then all I wanna do for the last part, much like a YAML command is I'm gonna reference that values file and that's NV values. So I'm gonna hit enter here and let's watch the time go on. Usually it takes a little moment for Helm to sort of get set up, uh, grab all those images and start installing. So while that's going on, we'll wait and see how it's working. Okay, there, something is already on my screen. It says it'll take it a little bit of time and you'll notice right out of the chart, we could use these commands to go get what the service is for the web UI. Of course, that's what we're gonna need and that's the thing that we wanted that load balancer to create. So I've, I've issued a command to my cloud provider, please give me a public IP address at a load balancer. Uh, the great way to look and see what's actually going on as this is being deployed is, uh, let's do a uh, get pods um, inside of that namespace. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a dash W at the end. I just wanna watch the progress going on. Um, I've probably been talking long enough where there's no progress to be seen. <laughs> I've already wasted, as you can see, 40, 41 seconds on this. Um, that's telling me that all of my pods for a new vector are already up and running after about 40 seconds. So let's just go get the services out of that namespace. Because A, I wanna make sure that the services are running, but even more importantly, I wanna see if and what that public IP address is. So here we are, we're 65 seconds in, um, I'm already set up. You'll notice that I've got it at this uh, routable IP address and you'll see the port 8443. That's the default port. It was part of our installation that we're going to want to pass this IP address, the port, and we're going to want to make sure that we prepend HTTPS in front of it. So let's go back to our browser. Like I said, we're going to do HTTPS, that IP address, and again, port 8443. New vector should be up and running on a public IP address. There we go, she's working. Uh, it's admin, admin for the defaults. Of course, we're gonna wanna change those as we log in. No, I'm not gonna save the password. You're gonna accept the uh, default licensing and right away, new vector's up and running and understanding things about your environment. But to be clear, not interfering with any of the deployments that are in, in there, you're not gonna make any application owners angry, hurt anybody's feelings, but you will see uh, down there on the lower right, uh, a warning about changing the default password. Let's go do that. You could either click on this orange box or you could go up under admin to your profile and make sure you're editing the profile. So like it said, it wanted us to change the password. Um, I'm going to do that because I think it's a good habit to be in. Um, I'm going to, I just put a strong password there, we're gonna leave it. But before I hop off this page, I wanna change this session timeout to something greater, at least I do, greater than 300 seconds. Uh, the maximum value here is actually 3,600. I'm gonna set it to 3,600 and be on my merry way. Of course, it'll kick me out. It's gonna ask for that password that we just created. And now I'm back in. Well, really we're done. New vectors installed. It's actually able to see a lot of things about your environment. The one thing I'd like you to do also right now is you look on the upper right up here, you'll see that vulnerability scanning is not enabled by default. You'll wanna flip that on. 
either at this scroller in the upper right, or you can go to the assets on the left-hand side, uh, click on nodes, and this is also a place where you can turn that auto scan on. Once it's on, it stays on until you shut it off again. And then very soon, we're going to see that the nodes start to get scheduled for a vulnerability scan. So right away, we're starting to get rich and interesting information about our environment. In fact, they're finished. I know right away from a security risk standpoint, I've got vulnerabilities inside of my environment. I can see where those are, where there's deployed. Uh, I don't have a registry in here yet, so that's one of the next steps we're gonna do. But the other thing we can look at is go see any network activity that's been going on inside of this environment. And what I mean by that on this page is it's this is going to show actual network activity inside of your Kubernetes environment all the way up through the entire OSI stack up to layer seven. So now we can start to understand the behavior of applications, model them, and start to enforce or at least alert on any violations, putting real true security inside of your environment. That's it. The point of this video is that it was supposed to be short. It's supposed to be easy to do. There are plenty of other educational videos that we've put out, plus other documentation that you can find at the New Vector main documentation site. Again, that's at opendocs at newvector.com. I hope to see you on the next video. We're gonna do a couple more installations. <music>